They were born to reign over the rest of us, but they earned their snobby reps, whether it's the shoelace ironing, the pleb-funded PJs, or low-key participating in human trafficking. These sovereign stars are a royal pain in the arse. The Queen Mother's death in 2002 was marked by 10 days of mourning throughout the kingdom, but according to The Guardian, it also sparked intense public backlash against the royal family's wealth and privilege. UK citizens who were struggling through a recession were fed up with funding the opulence and luxury that the royals reveled in. I thank you for the support you are giving me and my family as we come to terms with her death and the void she has left in our midst. The Daily Mail reported that the Queen Mother's lifestyle had been positively overflowing with grandeur and splendor. She owned five residences and employed over 100 staff. She also reportedly kept a dozen racehorses, a seller of rare wines, and bottomless wardrobes of designer duds. She hosted lavish dinner parties, even ringing a Fabergé pearl bell to summon her servants. Wealthy and influential guests feasted on lobster and chugged bottles of vintage champagne. And the so-called Empress of Extravagance left a debt of over seven million pounds when she died. According to the Queen Mother, the official biography, Elizabeth treated commoners with an alleged sense of entitlement that made her appear cruel, condescending, and even racist. Two of the Queen Mother's own nieces were even secretly institutionalized for life because they were born with learning difficulties, and the Queen Mum reportedly never visited once. When Margaret's sister was crowned Queen Elizabeth II in 1953, Margaret had to settle for just Her Royal Highness Princess Margaret, the Countess of Snowdon. And as fans of the crown are well aware, Margaret believed she should have been queen rather than her boring sister. But she was born second, so them's the rules. I think there are many things you're good at. Name one that's actually meaningful. Being a sister. No need to humor me. But Margaret made the best of a bad lot, throwing her heart and soul into the Countess' life. According to the Washington Post, by the 70s, she was blowing through her annual $103,000 taxpayer-funded expense allowance as quickly as humanly possible. She was infamous for her jet-setting, hard-partying, free-loading ways, not to mention her lavish cash-splashing and scandalous daily life. She became a tabloid fixture, leading to political grumbling about her being a, quote, expensive kept woman, according to Town & Country. The princess was also supposedly dismissive and rude to those she deemed to be beneath her, which was just about everyone, unless, of course, they were young, hot guys. Reportedly treating her servants like trash and having endless over-the-top demands, Margaret wasn't exactly dishing out the mutual respect to anyone. An inside source was quoted as saying in Princess Margaret, a biography, I have been at the same house parties as her, and her arrogance, her petulance, her rudeness, and her plain bad manners were awful. King Albert II of Belgium renounced his spot on the throne in 2013. He cited health reasons, but his reign had been riddled with controversy. According to BBC News, in 1997, it was revealed that Albert had an 18-year affair, resulting in a daughter back in the 60s. After the news broke decades later, Delphine Bowell hoped to be acknowledged by her biological father. I was the dirty laundry of King Albert. But Albert very quickly denied fathering any children outside of his marriage, sweeping everything under the rug. He just exploded on the telephone saying, never call me again, you're not my daughter. And that was when I was 33 years old. After Boel demanded Albert be ordered to provide a DNA sample, and he refused, he finally submitted to testing and was confirmed to be her father. His lawyer said in a statement via People, King Albert has decided to put an end to this painful procedure in good conscience. But Albert seemingly had no conscience whatsoever regarding the mass genocide committed by his ancestor. BBC News reported that King Leopold II ravaged the Congo in 1885, resulting in 10 million deaths. King Albert II refused used to acknowledge the atrocity, while his son, King Philippe, made somewhat of a statement on the matter in 2020. Albert has since whined about barely surviving the paltry 1 million euro a year salary he was given once he left the throne. Luckily, at least the poor man can find a little comfort in life. The Independent noted, he is seeking solace by traveling between his three holiday homes. 
It's probably not a total shock to see Prince Andrew pop up on this list. The Duke of York's alleged sense of entitlement dates back decades and seemingly knows no bounds. According to the Daily Mail, Andrew is the Queen's favorite offspring, so it's no surprise he was reportedly unbearably self-centered even as a child. He was regularly spotted annoying the guards and allegedly kicking dogs. Vanity Fair claimed that Andrew's sketchy lifestyle once he became an adult was a complete public relations nightmare. Some of his many scandals included dealing with shady billionaire tycoons, like a convicted Libyan gun smuggler who gifted him a $30,000 gold necklace. Andrew was also nicknamed Air Miles Andy after flying 50 miles to dine with elite Arabs, costing taxpayers $5,000. And that's not counting his very friendly ties to the late dictator, Muammar Gaddafi, and dinners with the corrupt president of Kazakhstan. More recently, news has broken about his cozy friendship with late convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein. Andrew has repeatedly denied Virginia Giuffre's allegations of sexual misconduct, claiming in a BBC interview that he would cooperate with the law, which he has not. Prince Andrew happily posing with Virginia Giuffre, who was then just 17. This is a real photo. As the Sunday Post noted in September 2021, Prince Andrew is an arrogant man, used to getting his own way without having to explain himself. He is an immovable object. However, in Jufre and her legal team, he may well have met an irresistible force. According to CNN, in February 2022, Andrew ultimately settled with Jufre for an unnamed sum, but still denied any wrongdoings. King Juan Carlos of Spain certainly endured his share of controversy. His brother had been heir to the throne until he was allegedly shot by Juan during a so-called prank. The details were a well-kept family secret, but as the biography Juan Carlos, a people's king, noted, Juan was definitely holding the smoking gun. But while he may have wiggled out of that one, he continued to get into trouble. According to CGTN, in 2004, Juan was slammed for slaying several bears during a luxury hunting trip, including one that was pregnant. Then, in 2012, during Spain's worst ever financial crisis, Juan shelled out $60,000 to jet off for an exotic elephant hunt. The king also entertained multiple mistresses, and he once gave 65 million euro to the luckiest among them. According to The New Yorker, he also awarded a building contract to Saudi Arabia in return for an under-the-table cash gift of 100 million bucks. As news of more scandals surfaced, King Juan left the throne in 2014, and his successor, King Felipe VI, revealed he wouldn't be accepting his dad's inheritance. Instead, he eliminated Juan's royal allowance, forced him to leave the country and pledged to never represent the family again. The late Prince Philip was the epitome of privilege and wealth. A chummy member of the elite class and perhaps securely out of touch with commoner life, he was infamous for his problematic jokes. According to Mashable, he once said during a visit to a youth center, so who's on drugs here? He looks as if he's on drugs. He also told the Nigerian president that his traditional robes made him look, quote, ready for bed. And then there was the time he remarked, I don't think a prostitute is more moral than a wife, but they are doing the same thing. <laughs> But it was a 2019 car crash that many felt really displayed Philip's arrogance. The then 97-year-old pulled into oncoming traffic, causing a car carrying two adults and a baby to hit him and flip his SUV. Philip escaped without injury, but the other car's passenger broke a wrist and was out of work for two months. According to the New York Times, Philip didn't apologize until four days later via written letter, but he was seen the following day driving a brand new Land Rover without wearing his seatbelt. The Mirror noted, Prince Philip needs to stop behaving like an arrogant, self-regarding arse. Christina is the sister of the reigning Spanish king, Felipe VI, but she and her husband, former Olympic handball player Iñaki Ardangarin, are responsible for one of the biggest scandals to rock the Spanish monarchy, according to The Guardian. When King Juan ceded the throne to Felipe, it was revealed that Ardangarin and his daughter were at the center of a vast financial scandal. According to El País, he had reportedly leveraged his status to win government contracts and carry out shady deals, then siphoned the money into 
to offshore accounts, Erdangren was ultimately sentenced to five years for tax fraud and embezzlement. At the time, Princess Christina was on the board of the Noose Institute, where her husband was the director, and the nonprofit organization was used to launder nearly 6 million euros from public funding. According to Forbes, Christina also faced charges of tax fraud. King Juan insisted his daughter wouldn't be treated differently because of her noble status, but she walked away scot-free, except for losing her title as Duchess of Parma and being banned from royal events. As Us Weekly reported, the couple divorced in January 2022 after 24 years of marriage. Princess Michael of Kent was once Baroness Marie Christie before achieving her current title, and she quickly became known as Pushy Princess and Rent-A-Princess because she would reportedly do anything for money. As Ranker noted, mostly she's infamous for her haughty behavior and less than sensitive trash talk. Because of royal family rules, the Baroness wasn't allowed to add Princess to her birth name when she got married, so she took hubby Prince Michael's full name, allowing her to formally be titled Princess. But more seriously, the controversial royal has been accused of racism multiple times. According to Vanity Fair, she named her two black sheep, Serena and Venus, and when she first met Meghan Markle, she wore a blackamoor brooch, a reported symbol of the celebration of slavery. As part of an interview with The Guardian, Princess Michael insisted she wasn't racist, adding, I even pretended years ago to be an African, a half-caste African, but because of my light eyes, I didn't get away with it, but I dyed my hair black. Then there's the fact her father was a Nazi and an SS major. As the Daily Mail reported, the princess adamantly denied any knowledge of her father's past. But in the documentary, Princess Michael, the Controversial Royal, experts branded her claims as being bogus. Princess Anne married then-acting Captain Mark Phillips in November 1973, and for a while, it seemed like a fairy tale romance. They had two children and lived on a palatial estate given to Anne by her mom. But while the outspoken, hardworking Anne was one of the most popular royals, Mark Phillips, not so much. And what he lacked in approval, he more than made up for in an ever-expanding ego. According to the biography Princess Anne, Mark suffered from a short temper when tired and found official visits tiring and hard standing around for hours. According to Town & Country, cracks soon started to appear in the marriage with rumors of infidelity on both sides. They divorced in 1992 following a report claiming Phillips had fathered a child outside of their marriage. Anne remarried just months later. Phillips remarried in 1997, but that ended after 15 years due to his philandering. In 2016, Phillips finally confessed to having an affair with someone 30 years his junior, but as he arrogantly noted to the Daily Mail, I'm not out to win a popularity contest. Prince Harry went from winning the public's hearts as he and the world mourned Princess Diana's death in 1997 to becoming the second least popular royal by 2021. According to YouGov, Harry came in second place with Meghan Markle, right behind, drumroll please, Prince Andrew. We focused all of our energies just on nurturing our relationship. On us. Yeah. On us. Harry and Meghan lost all the love from fans for expecting the public to pay for their post-Mexit security. As Piers Morgan told the Daily Mail, I've seen some disgraceful royal antics in my time, but for pure arrogance, entitlement, greed, and willful disrespect, nothing has ever quite matched the behavior of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Their popularity dropped even further following their Oprah interview, which led to Morgan again ripping the couple for being total narcissists. In another furious Daily Mail rant, Harry and Meghan also came under fire for a statement that appeared on their Archwell Foundation site. They claimed the controversial August 2021 U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan, where years earlier, Harry had served two frontline tours, left them personally hurt, and they announced they were supporting vaccine equity to help stop the spread of COVID-19. Regarding all of that, royal biographer Angela Levin told the U.S. Sun, It's so grandiose and patronizing. This is another example of them telling us what to do. We mustn't fly. We we mustn't have more than two children. We must be compassionate, and they're the least compassionate people you can imagine. Sarah Ferguson was hounded by the press from the moment she snared Randy Andy, aka Prince Andrew. Nicknamed Fergie, she was constantly criticized for her fluctuating weight, opening the door for tabloids to call her the Duchess of Pork. She later admitted on the Gemma and Emma podcast that the bullying had destroyed her. It is very cruel and very painful. 
Still, Ferguson did little to ingratiate herself with the public or the royals. And according to Express, she encountered Queen Elizabeth's wrath before even marrying Andrew. The queen was allegedly horrified by Ferguson's raucous bachelorette night antics, which a source described as bottles of champagne being fired in every direction. But things went downhill from there. There were topless photos of Fergie, having her toes sucked by a millionaire on a yacht. She used her royal connections to land a $3 million Weight Watchers spokesperson contract. She also made an awkward docu-reality show, and despite not being invited to Prince William and Kate's wedding, she managed to worm herself in anyway. Worst of all, though, was when she was caught in a tabloid sting. According to The Guardian, Fergie was secretly filmed negotiating to sell ex-husband Prince Andrew's endorsement in return for 500,000 pounds. In 2021, Friedrich, the Crown Prince of Denmark, allegedly exiled his brother, Prince Joachim, and his wife to France. According to the Daily Beast, when the outcast couple first relocated to Denmark, Frederick apparently felt they were threatening his sovereignty by muscling in on his territory. As Hello reported, Frederick was so enraged that he ordered his brother to be excluded from family Christmas. But in Frederick's defense, his bro's past actions had outlets like the local claiming he's a man who makes the UK's Prince Andrew look positively likable. But it appears that the cray seems to run in the Danish noble blood. Frederick's dad, Henrik, the late prince consort of Denmark, once went on a rant about his wife, Queen Margheta II, saying he'd never be laid to rest next to her in the royal cemetery. He told a tabloid, "'My wife does not give me the respect a normal wife must give her spouse. It is her that is making a fool of me. I didn't marry the queen to be buried at Roskilde.'" For the record, Henrik was buried in Fredensborg in 2018. King Edward VIII infamously renounced the throne in 1936 to marry U.S.-born two-time divorcee Wallace Simpson. His abdication forced his shy, unwilling younger brother, George, to become king. George VI's wife, Elizabeth, later best known as Queen Mother, reportedly knew exactly who to blame for destroying their lives. The Guardian noted, Elizabeth always blamed Wallace Simpson for George's death, believing that if her husband had not had to be king, he might not have died so young. As if that wasn't enough of a scandal in itself, Edward was involved in numerous others over the years. According to King Edward VIII, a biography, he was monumentally indiscreet, politically shallow, and surprisingly avaricious. He was also apparently racist, classist, and a Nazi sympathizer. But it was the jet-setting and money-grabbing of his post-throne life that really showcased his bad side. According to the Daily Mail, King George VI's secretary's diaries were released in 2006, and they didn't portray Big Brother Edward in the best light. Apparently, Edward was rich as hell and placed money above all else. And still, he and his wife complained about not having enough. I don't much care for fussy things or smells, but I do like a good, well-milled soap. As the diary's author suggested, so isolated was he in the world of his own desires that I do not think he ever felt affection, absolute objective affection, for any living being. When it comes to the worst of the worst, Prince Charles just might nab the number one spot. As the Daily Beast noted in 2021, you might think that Andrew is delivering an unparalleled masterclass in arrogance. That, however, would be to disregard the performance of his brother, Prince Charles. The outlet cited his involvement in a so-called cash for honor scheme. Charles denied the claim, despite awarding a commander of the Order of the British Empire medal to a Saudi billionaire who had made a huge donation to Chuck's estate. As noted in Prince Charles' The Passions and Paradoxes of an Improbable Life, he is a preening snob, keenly sensitive to violations of protocol, intolerant of opinions contrary to his own, and horribly misled about the extent of his own talents. He also allegedly flies private, with a reported white leather toilet seat in tow. According to The Guardian, Charles' lavish lifestyle is allegedly so over the top it would shock Louis XIV, and even his mom thinks he's too much. My old Aston Martin, which I've had for 51 years, that runs on, can you believe this, surplus English white wine. At one point, Charles allegedly employed 85 staff. Four valets picked up his clothes from the floor and helped him get dressed. And there was another to put toothpaste on his toothbrush, and then one specifically to handle his urine samples. According to The Express, Charles has reportedly also insisted on someone ironing his shoelaces every morning. Because if they're lucky, one day they'll be ironing the King of England's shoelaces. 
If you or anyone you know has been a victim of sexual assault, help is available. Visit the Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network website or contact RAIN's National Helpline at 1-800-656-HOPE-4673.